Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rafshan Hashmi with another uh, Aftar and Sahur transmission. And folks, before I start that, I want to put my accent. And here it is. If you want to buy it. And then I would like to do the ritual of uh, a bakalur and out. And this is out. It smells so good. I didn't burn it. I'm just smelling it. And if you want to burn it, then I want to show you that this is the coal which you use. And you put it like this, and you put little uh, uh, out from there and this, and then burn it. And this uh, uh, technique is used for the generations in my family. As you all know, I'm direct descendant of uh, Abu Bakr, Rasi Allah Anha, and I'm so fortunate to be part of that family. And then, uh, folks, before I start, as you all know, I am full-time author and I am live from Rockville, Maryland, USA. And I want to remind you that these are my two books. The first one is The Modern Moon Mentality, New Strategies to Succeed in India and the Global Marketplace. When this book came, there was a lot of research going on on Jugal, the buzzword from India. And uh, folks, I... Excuse me, let me drink some water now. So when this book came, the modern mogul mentality, uh, there was a lot of research going on on Jugaad, the Hindi buzzword, and I devised a business model and it is in case study format and this book this book was amazon bestseller as well as hot number one new release on amazon and these books are available worldwide wherever books are sold and i so please go and buy these two books and give me an honest review as i told you i'm a full-time author and these are self-published books so I bring food to the table by the sale of this, these books. And for this book, The Modern Mughal Mentality, I want a documentary to be made. So all those documentary uh, producers uh, listening, please contact me at afshan at drafshanhashmi.com. And for my second book, the Outbreak of a Monstrous Infection, I want a movie to be made so all those movie or tv serial producers please contact me at afshan at dr afshan and uh, either a movie or a tv or a web series so please contact me if you produce that at afshan at dr afshan and this book was also an amazon bestseller and this book came before coronavirus so just see how important it is i have in imaginary story concocted uh, how a virus spreads and ruins the human population and the beauty is this that this book came before the spread of coronavirus having said that please go and buy these two books and give me an honest review having said that friends now i will read a lit little bit Now I will read a little bit from the study Quran. And I will read from this one, the cow. And Al-Baqra, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Al-Baqra is from the Madinan period. It is named Al-Baqra or 
the cow because of the cow mentioned in verses 67 it is the longest surah of the quran comprising one twelfth of the entire text in most illuminated manuscripts and printed editions of the quran the first seven verses of the al baqarah appear on an illuminated page opposite an illuminated page containing the seven verses of the fatiha or opening the first chapter of the quran these two pages together form for most readers the first visual experience of the quran as a physical book few subjects discussed in the quran do not find some mention in al baqarah topics include matters of theology law sacred history metaphysics cause Mology and the spiritual life. The surah opens with a journal description of belief, a belief in the seen and unseen, the multiplicity of prophets, and the imperative to give from what we possess, whether spiritual or material. After a section addressing the hypocrisy of the protestations and claims of those who disbelieve in God. The surah turns to an account of the creation of Adam and the fall from the garden, including the status of the angels in relation to human beings and the role of Satan in Adam's fall. The history of the children of Israel figures prominently in the surah. Stressed are the blessings of God upon the Israelites throughout their history, beginning with one of the several accounts provided by the Quran describing the encounter between Moses and Pharaoh as well as events at Mount Sinai and the parable of the sacrificial cow Bakra to which the Sunnah owns its name. This history is interwoven with theological questions debated between Jews and Muslims such as the duration of one's stay in hell, the status of the Archangel Gabriel and other accusations and challenges exchanged between the two communities. Al-Baqarah is one of the most important surahs as far as the question of the status of other religions is concerned, addressing this matter from a theological and legal perspective and also as a question of sacred history. Ibrahim is discussed as a prophet who predated uh, Judaism and Christianity who established the Kaaba as a temple of worship and who was a, a Hanif or a, a primordial um, monotheism. Uh, important rituals and acts of worship are legislated in the surah including the pilgrimage the required fast during the month of Ramadan and the other matters such as the direction Qibla one should face while reciting the canonical prayers. Other legal matters discussed are economic contract, usury marriage and divorce, the status of orphans, the causes and conduct of war, inheritance, alcohol, consumption and gambling and punishment for capital crimes. Some of the Quran's most famous and most recited verses are found in this surah, including verses 255 called the pedestal verse Aytan Kursi and the final two verses which are important in Muslim devotional life. Concerning this surah, the Prophet is reported to have said everything has a zenith and the zenith of the Quran is su uh, Surat al-Baqarah and it has a verse which is the lord of the verses of the Quran. The pedestal verse truly Satan leaves the house when he hears Surat al-Baqarah recited in it and learned al-Baqarah holding to it is a blessing leaving it is an affliction and falsehood has no power over it. In the name of God the compassionate and merciful Alif Lam Mim this is the book in which there is no doubt a guidance for the reverend who believes in, who believe in the unseen and perform the prayer and is spent from that which we have provided them and who believe in God. Of the 114 surahs of the Quran, 29 begin with individual letters of the Arabic alphabet. In this translation, these letters are trans, 
literated as recited. For example, Alif is the name of the first letter of the Arabic alphabet, although in other translations, the corresponding Latin letters are used. In recitation, the names of the letters are used, not their sounds. Also, some letter names have two forms. For example, Ra and Ra, the Quran uses the former, the commentary, the latter. The individual letters are one of the most enigmatic features of the Quran and have been a subject of debate and speculation among Muslims in the revelation of the Quran. So this was little bit the the interpretation of the cow or surah al-Baqarah and I got it from this study Quran and now folks I will be telling you the history now I will be telling you the history of Ramadan in the United States the history of Ramadan in the United States is linked to the historical roots of Islam in this country. Historians confirm that Estevanico of Azamor, also known as Esteban, who accompanied the Spanish as a guide, was the first Muslim from Northern Africa, Azamor, Morocco, when he landed in Florida in 1527. He became the first Muslim to set foot in what became the continental United States. Moreover, a large percentage of the enslaved Africans who were forcibly uprooted during the colonial settlements of North America were Muslims. Social scientists estimate that as many as 30% of the enslaved Africans were Muslims from West and Central African countries. Upon their arrival in North America, maintaining their Islamic faith was strenuous as they were forced to abandon their relig religious practices. They were forced to take religious customs that were brutally imposed. Many lost their faith and converted to Christianity. Despite such efforts, many enslaved Americans, Muslims, kept aspects of their cultural and religious roots most notably fasting during Ramadan and praying to name a few. Escaped enslaved man Charles Ball in his autobiography written in 1837 revealed the story of an enslaved Muslim who observed the five daily prayers. He also mentioned the, uh, the several Muslims he knew referring to them as Muhammadans or the followers of the religion of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Islam. Salah Bilali, an enslaved African Muslim born in 1770 in Masina, known now as Mali, was enslaved at only 12 years of age. He was known as well-educated and a religious and committed Muslim. Despite the many challenges, Bilali managed to read the Quran pray the daily prayers and observe the holy month of Ramadan. Another enslaved African who was recorded as faithful and dedicated Muslim who fasted the month of Ramadan was Umar bin Said. Ramadan was observed by enslaved African-American Muslims confirming that Islam is far from being foreign in this nation and continent. Over time, rec records were lost, but these are the few among so many enslaved people who practice Islam in secret. Today, Ramadan is observed in United States by 3.45 million Muslims, the second most racially and ethnically diverse religious group in the nation. And uh, Ramadan Mubarak and Ramadan Kareem, everyone. So this was a little bit of history of uh, Ramadan, which I researched from internet for my viewers and folks to know about history of Ramadan or fasting in, in United States of America. So now, uh, friend, I will tell you what did you uh, do for uh, for Aftar today? I made dahi pulki. And I will uh, tell you the recipe of that and what the he pulki is. The he pulki recipe is a traditional yogurt based preparation with deep fried gram flour base and dumplings topped with chutneys. 
a quick and under 30 minutes no fuss recipe with gram flour fritters and yogurt no pre-soaking of lentils no grinder of batter a delicious dish which you can make on special occasions or when an announced guest arrives and i made uh, today for Ramad uh, for my aftar Ramadan and summer special Dahi Pulki recipe from the state of Uttar Pradesh and Delhi. And I am originally from Uttar Pradesh. What is Dahi Pulki? Dahi Pulki is popular in Western UP and is especially made during the summers or holy month of Ramadan. It is popular in both the Hindu and Muslim households. An easy, delicious, gluten-free and vegan-friendly recipe which is a crowd pleaser and even the kids love it. Not only for summers, you can make it even in winters if you want to save time on making dahi vada or somehow the urat dal doesn't suit you. Looking at the pictures, you might think that it is dahi vada or dahi pulki, but it is totally different dish. Only similarity is that the dumplings are soaked in spiced yogurt. It can be called a closer cousin of the more popular dahi vada or bhalle, but a lighter version. My dad, uh, uh, my grandmother used to make it sometimes and my mother used to make it all the time. Since the hibhalla are made with urat dal which gets heavier on stomach, especially consuming it many may get upset stomach, especially during hush North Indian summers. Kulki means light in local Hindi dialect in North India and these are very light and airy dumplings in spite of being fried. It is due to the method of preparing the batter. The gram flour batter is beaten till light and fluffy. This leaves a very light texture to the dumplings. Also, we can make it instantly means there is no soaking of dal or, grind, uh, or grinding. It is under 30 minutes dish. Only time is required is chilling the pulkis for a couple of hours to enjoy the real taste. Gram flour slash basin. It is the main ingredient for making the dahi pulkis. Many people call gram flour as chicken pea flour also, but both are different. Gram flour is made by grinding split Bengal gram or chana dal. Chicken pea flour is made with chicken peas or kavli chana uh, slash garbanzo beans, but many people use the name interchangeably. Dahi slash yogurt. Use fresh sweet plain curd. Do not use sour curd as it spoils the taste of final dish. Vegans can use any good plant-based yogurt. Split yellow moong slash Dhuli moon. It is optional. Many people add it and many people use on gram flour for, ma for making pulkis. Roast moon dal and then grind it to fine powder before adding to batter. Spices. Caraway seed salt to add in pulki slash fritter butter. A uh, batter. For yogurt, roasted cumin powder, red chilies, power chili flakes, herbs, Fresh coriander green chilies to serve sweet tamarind dates chutney and green chutney for topping or add tempering of cumin seeds, whole red chili and chili powder with or without curry leaves. How to make the heap pulki? Prepare yogurt. Take yogurt slash the heat in a bowl and all the, add all the spices and finally chop coriander leaves. Add water and beat it till smooth yogurt should be chilled and add chill water to it refrigerate it till the pulkis are ready making of pulkis make batter with the ingredients listed and uh, listed uh, under pulki section if uh, and that is if adding moong dal dry roast moong dal cool it and then grind it the batter should be very light and fluffy for that beat batter for five to eight minutes you can use a balloon whisk or beat it by hand batter will turn creamy in color to check if batter is ready from frying add a drop of batter in a bowl of water it should float in the water if the batter sinks down then beat it again till it is ready for frying for frying, fry pulkis on low to medium heat. Do not keep the flame of your stove top on high as the pulkis will only cool from outside and the inside will remain raw. Drop hot pulkis in yogurt, mix it with and refrigerate for 2 to 3 hours. Serving suggestions. 
Full keys are served in two ways. One is chopped to it with green coriander chutney and tamarind chutney with or without finely chopped onions. And the other way is add tarka or tempering of uh, and tempering of cumin seeds, red chili powder and whole red chili powder. You may also add curry leaves. Shelf life and storing the pulkis. Dashi pulki stays best when consumed on the same day. You can make four to five hours before serving as it needs some chilling time also. The leftovers can be refrigerated in air a tight container and consumed by the next day. Fried pulkis can be stored for two to three days in an airtight container. When you need to make the heap pulki, soak the fried pulkis in lukewarm water for a few minutes. Lightly squeeze out water and then add to prepare the he yogurt. Tips to get the soft and melt in mouth heap pulkis like gram, uh, gram flour fritters. To get the soft, fluffy, and melt in mouth pulkis, we need to aer aerate the batter very nicely. Gram flour fritters tend to get very dry and hard if the batter is not beaten well. Beat the batter very nicely, either using a whisk or with hand to incorporate air. The color of the batter should turn from light yellow to creamy. Yogurt curd juice should be fresh and not tasting sour. Pulkis observe water from yogurt. It should not be too thick. Add two parts water while preparing the yogurt to soak pulkis. If the yogurt thickens, then add some water before serving. Add hot pulkis to the heat slash yogurts. So this was it and uh, the dahi pulki recipe. And now folks. And now, folks, I will be talking about a poem which is written by called First Night of Ramadan, a poem by Daniel Abdul Hay Moore. But before uh, telling you the poem, I would like to tell you who Daniel Abdul Hay Moore was. Daniel Abdul Hay Moore. July 30, 1940, Oklahoma, California to April 18, 2016, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was a U.S. poet, essayist, and libretist. In 1970, he converted to the Sufi tradition of Islam and changed his name to Ab Abdul Ha. Abdul uh, Hai, eventually merging it with his birth name. He then created works such as Ramadan Sonnets 1996 and The Blind Beekeeper 2002, most works being self published in early adulthood, who traveled widely, living in Morocco, Spain, Algeria, and Nigeria, as well in Santa Barbara in the United States. So, this was a little bit about Daniel Abdul Hay Moore and now the poem, which is called First Night of Ramadan. And it's a beautiful poem. So, I thought, you know, I will uh, recite it in, in this Aftari and Sahur transmission. A single stone is thrown in and the canyon resounds with the heruhas of angel. A single breath contains the known and unknown universes. Back behind endless space are motions that vibrate the heart. Back behind ancient mountains and historical intricacies, the shadow gives way to light that has a door in it to let us through. We take no step that doesn't bring us near. One sip and the oceans disappear. One glance and the skies bend closer to hear our emptiness. One heart wrench, elegant elevation, and we are on a plateau tossing a stone in the dark that never stops echoing. Daniel Abdul Hay Moore, and this was written on 8 1 2011, first Ramadan 1432. So, this is a beautiful poem of Ramadan, and now, uh, friends. I love to wear abayas during the Ramadan, and I thought, you know, I will show you some of my, uh, some of uh, the beautiful abayas, you know, which are present, and I got this all pictures from internet. So this is the first one which I like.
So this is Avaya fashion, you know, which I wanted to show you in this transmission. And do let me know in comments how you liked it. And I also have beautiful collection of abayas. They look so beautiful when you go to mosque to pray or you go to aftar party. They look so nice. Some people like this, but personally, I don't like this much covering. But many people like it. So do you have abayas? Do you like ladies to wear abaya? Do let me know in the comments and how did you like these abayas? This is also too much covering according to my standards. Some people like it, but I personally don't like this much covering. This looks so cute. also very cute.
so folks this was little bit about abaya fashion and from time to time i will show you abaya and kaftan and jalabia and uh, uh, fashion in these uh, uh, telecast when I give so do uh, watch it and do let me know in comment section that uh, how you like it and please do uh, do not forget to buy my two books the modern local mentality new strategies to succeed in India and the global marketplace and the outbreak of a monstrous infection and now friends I will end this uh, broadcast and cheers and bye bye Khuda Hafiz and Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem, and everyone have a blessed Ramadan. Bye-bye and Khuda Hafiz.